Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first Rift from the Headlines of 2024. Uh, we will uh, continue as we have over the last couple of uh, sessions. Uh, you know, Israel is very much on our hearts and our minds and our prayers. And uh, the whole situation has uh, you know, impacted Jews around the world. And uh, in particular, one of the areas that has the focus of Jews in America is the college campus. Now is the uh, acceptance or response season for those who have uh, high school seniors, it's the applications are in, the responses are starting to come. Discussions about gap year, discussions about campuses. Uh, we have that in our family with a high school senior uh, looking to go to Israel next year, please God, and then uh, planning now for colleges. And uh, there's a lot of discussion. What's the situation like? How's, what's the, how can you formulate your checklist? What are the important things? There's a whole bunch of different ads. Uh, suffice, it to, suffice it to say, Yeshiva University is looking pretty good for many uh, of those who are looking for strong Jewish life, uh, strong support for Israel and zero anti-Semitism, right? Uh, it's, it, it's looking pretty good. Uh, it's interesting to see how certain Christian colleges are recruiting Jewish students, saying that you won't have anti-Semitism here. We'll love you to, uh, uh, we'll, we'll love you into, uh, I don't know, conversion maybe, I don't know. That's not really written down, but there definitely some of the Christian universities and colleges are rolling out the welcome mat for Jewish students who are looking for a safe place. It's uh, you know, the, the, the best way to describe any of this most of the time is uh, complicated. Uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Israel with uh, Apex Lefel Fellowship for uh, Rabbinical Students. And there was a group of rabbinical students from uh, Orthodox and Conservative and Reform rabbinical schools. And the idea was to uh, go to Israel and to uh, highlight uh, the Israel that they uh, think they know, but really what they need to know as they become rabbis and go out into the field in support of Israel and their congregations to support Israel. Suffice it to say, going to Israel during a period of war uh, heightens all different aspects of the trip. Uh, but uh, the word you hear most often is uh, complicated, how to deal with different situations. The post-October uh, 7th Israel, it's complicated what happens after in Gaza after the fighting stops. It's complicated. We like to joke there's the uh, complicated drinking game. Anytime anyone says the word complicated, you make a l'chaim. Uh, it would end very hazily for everybody around the table. Um, but I did want to take a look at some reactions and some headlines and some articles and some thoughts relating uh, to the college campus today um, and uh, highlight some Jewish approaches to the college campus in general and in particular today uh, as formulated uh, by a, a particular article I saw just a couple of weeks ago. So let's dive into the background with uh, source number one. And this is in the aftermath of October 7th. There was a coalition of U.S. colleges uniting to condemn the evil of Hamas. And so this is from the New York Post on October 17th. A broad coalition of college officials is releasing a statement supporting Israel and opposing the evil of Hamas after several universities spouted outrage for failing to immediately condemn the terror attacks. We are horrified, sickened by the brutality and humanity of Hamas, reads the statement obtained by Axios. Murdering innocent civilians, including babies and children, raping women and taking the elderly as hostages are not the actions of political disagreement, but the actions of hate and terrorism. The basis of all universities is a pursuit of truth, and it's times like these that require moral clarity. Like the fight against ISIS, the fight against Hamas is a fight against evil. It was signed by university officials at the University of Notre Dame, Yunushim University, Baylor University, Sunni and CUNY officials. Additionally, the presidents of the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities, the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities, and the United Negro College Fund signed on to the message. We are building a broad coalition that can articulate inhumanity when we see it, Rabbi Ari Berman, president of Yeshiva University, told Axios. This is the greatest atrocity against the Jewish people since the Holocaust and one of the most significant attacks of international terrorism. The statement comes as colleges across the country face backlash for their failure to condemn Hamas. And there were those that failed to condemn Hamas and those that didn't sign. Source number two, more than 100 universities have issued a joint statement condemning Hamas standing with Israel. I mean, rising concerns about anti-Semitism, but conspicuously absent from the list were the Ivy League colleges. So uh, th th this was a um, this was a um, 
This was a statement that was introduced and was spread around by Rabbi Ari Berman Yeshiva University. And the idea was, let's straight up or down, just condemn it. Very briefly, this is terrorism, this is barbarism, as the article uh, summarizes in, in, in number one. But the Ivy League universities didn't want to sign. Now, you know, there's a, there's a couple of ways of looking at the overall situation. Uh, one, you know, maybe the Ivy Leagues are too good to sign a common uh uh, statement petition that's being sent around, being signed by uh, a broad coalition of over 100 universities. Some of them want to have their own statements, and some of them did. Uh, some of them didn't. And in, even in terms of issuing statements, some universities toe the line of it's not relevant to the university. The university never comments, period. Um, this is uh, famously the approach, for example, the University of Chicago, that they don't talk about it's not relevant to the university. The university doesn't comment. It's not our business to comment. So this you know, avoids commenting on trivial matters, but it also means they're not weighing in on more substantive matters, like in this case. Uh, but what did emerge in the aftermath was it was time for people to show their true colors. Is condemn it, or, uh, or you know, the, the silence will be deafening. And uh, the effort by Rabbi Berman from Michigan University did draw in numerous universities and groups of universities, and you know, to their credit, SUNY and CUNY signed on, United Negro College Fund signed on, Catholic and Christian universities organizations signed on, uh, but not everyone wanted to join it because it was you know, too uh, amcha, it was too common man, it was not uh, elite, it was not specific, and they issued their own statements, and some unfortunately uh, stayed silent. So this led to a reaction in some of the uh, Jewish high schools as to what will college recruiting season look like. Right. This, these articles are coming out end of October, middle of October, end of October, beginning of November. This is when typically college night takes place. Representatives of universities are invited into the schools. Well, source number three, some Jewish schools did not roll out the welcome mat. This is uh, one article from the JTA beginning of November. Torah County, Bergen County, a boys' school in Teaneck, and Mayano Yeshiva High School for girls located just blocks away. Each told families on Friday that they were enacting new requirements for colleges that seek to meet with students on campus, a regular component of the college search process. We feel strongly that we cannot continue to invite college representatives to speak to our students as they have in the past. TAB school, head of school, Rabbi Shlomos Turchel, and associate principal, Rabbi Stephen Finkelstein, wrote in an email outlining new requirements for on-campus recruitment. Your son's physical, emotional welfare is too important to us. Going forward, TABC and my own administrators, recruiters, and college representatives must now bring a statement from the university leadership detailing their plans to protect and maintain the safety and security of our graduates on their campuses as Jews. And this was the beginning of an effort over the, the, the subsequent several weeks of a whole uh, statement put out by all of the metro area Yeshiva high schools, uh, boys schools, girls schools, co-ed schools as to their, their concern for the, 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 what the colleges uh, would be presenting and that the colleges take the needs of the Jewish students and the safety and security of the Jewish students into uh, account. And uh, other articles were written, which mentioned other schools. So this is something that the TABC in my note got uh, the, the leg up and got the first uh, press about, but uh, that it was clearly a concern, certainly in our area and in Jewish high schools across the country of being uh, more wary and being more concerned and putting holding some of the schools to the fire feet to the fire in order to ensure that the safety and security of jewish students get taken into account so these are things that were coming out in the aftermath of october 7th through uh, november into december source number four is from a, a a letter or an article that was posted online by rabbi mayor torsky rabbi mayor torsky is a rosh yeshiva at Yeshiva University, uh, a part of the Tolner Hasidic dynasty, uh, also a grandson of Rabbi Joseph Soloveitchik. He uh, lives in Riverdale. So he published a response regarding colleges and universities which condone support for Hamas. He was the first that I saw that took on directly, well, what about schools that didn't put out a statement? Is there a, is there a religious, is there a Jewish, is there a halachic issue? And so he, he writes in the question, raising the question, the pivotal question of attending secular college has been, has in the past two months been recast. Previously, the question centered primarily, but not exclusively, upon the alarming rate of assimilation. Alongside that life and death consideration, right, assimilation is no laughing matter, a new factor relevant to many, but all, all secular colleges has emerged. And that is 
the deplorable in action and lack of speech of university college presidents in reacting to pro-Hamas demonstrations on their campuses and more generally all forms of violent anti-Semitism. Is it permissible for our children to seek admittance to a college or graduate school whose administration has refused to condemn student groups who justify even celebrate the October 7th atrocities of Hamas? Is it permissible to teach in these institutions? So he put it as a halachic question. Rabbi? And so, yes. I just want to say that um, he went to Harvard. I was he, about to say that. And his father, you know, and who he, who he was a very brilliant scholar in his own right, obviously, was a Correct. professor at how. And I think he, Rabbi Tursky has, you know, I think he wants to provide enough room in his statements to give Harvard a second chance. <laughs> so, so, so if you look, he went to Harvard. He's not going to Harvard. I don't know if he has children or grandchildren no. of relevant ages, but no. what I correct, you know, he he's clearly uh, he's brilliant from a brilliant family with a lot of brilliant genes on all sides and uh, in that family floating around. And um, you could tell even by the way the sentences and the syntax and the grammar is composed, there's a, a, a lot of possible variables in, 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 in qualifications that are part of it. It's very similar. We're gonna see a statement a little bit, uh, a, a little bit of a piece of a, an article from Rabbi Aaron Lichtenstein, another, well, he went to, he went to Yeshiva University, but is a Harvard PhD. A, also part of that extended, he's uh, Lichtenstein, of course, is Rav Salvechik's son-in-law. They're all, they, they all seem to think and write and express themselves in a very measured way. At the same time, with regards to this discussion, he was the first to say, well, is it mutter or is it aser? Basically, to go to schools that didn't issue statements. Now, I don't, I think Harvard may have issued a statement. Right? This, we obviously, you know, we're skipping a lot of the drama that surrounded the three presidents um and their testimony before Congress and the context and how that became, you know, terrific fodder for comedians and uh, late night uh, skits all around the world, including in Israel. The idea of, um, you know, th there's a lot more that's going on that will, that, you know, impacts life on these campuses, whether they issued statements or didn't issue statements. And, you know, there's a lot of more noise that, that we can talk about. But I think Harvard actually did issue a statement condemning even and Christine Gay issued a statement. She didn't at first because there were 30, some 30 organizations in Harvard put out a, a letter that seemed to be a supporter of Hamas and she condemned that letter. So th th there, are, so Harvard may actually be okay and be excluded from this discussion. Right? Because Rabbi Tversky is not talking about students on campus protesting. He's talking about a university itself that d does not condemn Hamas. So if you have a university that's not going to maybe let's take University of Chicago, because they don't issue statements on anything. And again, he's not talking about a specific university. He's talking conceptually. If there's a university that doesn't condemn Hamas, is it permitted to go there or to teach there? And that, I thought, was pretty interesting, the fact that he, that's the language he's going to use. Um, you know, based, on his, based on his scholarship and his intellectual approach, and, of course, the way the year is going, he didn't say yes or no. And we're going to have to now, you know, we're going to unpack how he raises the question, as well as his unique approach uh, to the issue in particular, because it starts off by talking about attending a secular college has been recast, which means attending a secular college before October 7th wasn't simple. Uh, there was a different issue involved. So what was previously the issue? Primarily, but not exclusively, about the alarming rate of assimilation which was and should be viewed as a life and death consideration. Um, but there's another one. Uh, now, what about the Hamas? So I wanted to, and he doesn't address the previous question of colleges, but I want to address the previous question of colleges. What about the college atmosphere? And you know, Rabbi Tversky is taking it as a given that college is something that people are going to, as was mentioned, he himself went. Uh, he all po po points out there's a serious life and death issue of assimilation that has to be addressed at colleges. So I wanted to to look a little bit about that previously, you know, before we get down to this particular case in Rav Tversky's approach. What about going to secular university in general? You know, people I'm sure who are you know listening who were studying this may have gone to secular college. I did not. Yeshiva University High School. Yeshiva University College, Bernard Ravenhill Graduate School, Isaac Elkhorn Theological Seminary. I only know one type of school. 
Uh, so far to date, my children have only attended Jewish schools. Uh, my, uh, my daughter and I was in college in Israel. You know, it's not Yeshiva University, but it's in Israel. So it's by definition, by default, it's Jewish. So you know, what about secular college in general? So there was an interesting article that was written a number of years ago. Uh, just when, you know, looking at different articles about college, this is from, I guess, almost six years ago from Sruli Fruchter. I don't know if anybody knows him. Uh, I'm sure some people know Fruchters and people know Srulis. I don't know if the two together. At the time, he was a senior at DRS, high school out in the five towns. So he wrote about attending a secular college is okay. I've been told that attending a secular college is synonymous with falling off the derech. I've been given a bracha that I don't get accepted in any of the secular colleges I've applied to. I've weighed these ridiculous opinions with far more value than they actually hold. You can tell he's like a, writing like a teenager. So um, while there will surely be hurdles to clear living a non-Orthodox lifestyle is undoubtedly possible in most college campuses. Most colleges also have a local Hillel, a Jewish student organization that encourages students of all backgrounds to form deep personal collections to Jewish life, learning, and Israel through Jewish exploration, leadership, and a sense of belonging. So just in the idea, if you're going to a secular college, is that there are challenges, but it's possible. But there are challenges. So which is it? Are the challenges insurmountable? Are the challenges too problematic and therefore don't attend? Or is it something to try? So we're going to look at a couple. We're going to look at the more uh, conservative small C approach of not attending. And we'll look at a more open approach of attending because Elu Elu Vivre Elohim Chayim, these are different approaches. For now, and I think what we'll see in the in both approaches is that there's a recognition of the danger and the concerns of uh, attending a non-Jewish institution of higher learning and being in that environment. At the same time, the idea of secular studies as just engaging them and studying them is not the issue. Throughout Jewish history, there has always been the, the warning light about Chachma Yivanit, Greek wisdom. The Talmud talks about the Greek wisdom and not studying it and not looking at the books uh, and, and outside knowledge, outside wisdom. At the same time, there was always a recognition that engaging in this, uh, being exposed to this was necessary. Mishnah Pirkei Avot, Da Mala Hashiv Shetashiv, Tolapi You have to know what to respond to those who raise questions. There were always rabbis involved in outside wisdom. You have the whole Middle Ages of rabbis being doctors and philosophers and poets and the Rambam. And so the idea of a Jew being exposed to outside knowledge seems to be mostly an asked and answered question. The, the knowledge is in and of itself not problematic. Obviously, Torah comes first. That's always been. We are the people of the book. Which book? Torah. As we say when we dive into the Mariv blessing before Shema, Ki heim chayenu that's our life. But we live in the real world. And while we live in the real world, other types of wisdom become uh, become uh, available, necessary, and can even be beneficial. And so here, it really is, as uh, the way Rabbi Tversky put it when formulating uh, the question in the past, was the alarming rate of assimilation and the challenges of being in that environment and studying in that environment. So first we come with Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein was asked about a question. This is source number six was asked about uh, yeshiva students going lilmod b'michlala b'me hakayitz. Summer school, right? They're not going to college classes during the year. They're in yeshiva. But in the summer, things change a little bit. The yeshiva schedule is a little bit looser. Um, and so is this allowed? So he's writing this in June 1972. So he says, inyan b'michlalot, colleges, Right? He says, if you're not sure what a michlala is and you think it's a girl seminary, well, he's talking about the college version. How are you dovish eno pashut? It's not simple. Complicated. It's a little early to take those drinks, but if you watch the recording and it's after five. Complicated. Eno pashut. V'lo mochim yoser We shouldn't protest too much. Because it's not going to, the protest isn't going to matter to a whole host of students. Because they're getting challenges from their parents and pressure from the parents to go to college. And some of them for making a living. There's some students who wouldn't be in yeshiva anyway. So to say that college is forbidden is not 
relevant. It's not it's not realistic. People have pressure, whether it be parental or financial, or not everyone can learn. If you're not going to learn, you should do something with your time. You have to know that it's not just okay. You know, it's it's complicated. There are reservations. And then in particular with this question, Rav Moshe Feinstein talks about people who in the summer don't want to go on vacation. They don't want to go to, what's the word? Country. Right? For Rav Moshe, what do you do in the summer for vacation? You go to the country, the Catskills. So they spend their vacation in college. So even if they have good intentions, just a couple of weeks, you can take a whole course. And this will give them more time to study in yeshiva during the year, right? You can't go, just go to summer school. They encounter women who are not dressed appropriately. And they can encounter other influences that uh, impact their their, their their hearts and their minds negatively. And so, you know, sometimes it's, it, it can lead to uh, getting involved in unhealthy and in, in improper relationships. And this we can't uh, permit at all. There's no good intention that could overcome this problem. So Rabbi Feinstein is agreeing with the petitioner, the questioner who forbade his yeshiva students from going to summer school. He said, you're right, it makes sense to forbid them from going to summer school. Um, they should uh, do college uh, in the winter, in the nights, or whatever it is. Ain't no pashut. So we see a more conservative approach to college because of uh, in, in Rav Moshe Feinstein's uh, uh, understanding, the way that you're worried about outside influences. Questions, comments, reactions. Before we'll take a look at another more conservative approach, similar but a little bit more broad. Rav Moshe seems to here at least mentions a specific problem with summer school, but you notice he's not forbidding college outright, nor is he encouraging it outright. He's recognizing it's not it's a no davar pashut. What in life is simple. All right, so now let's look at the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem and Now, I'm sure everyone's thinking when he's here that, oh, the Rebbe went to college. The Rebbe went to the Sorbonne. The Rebbe went to University Rabbi, of Berlin. I have and a, uh, a, we will address a, that. I have a question. Yes. I personally feel it was a great wake-up call to have the leading Ivy League schools in America tolerate Nazis and 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 their and their behavior. There are many many Jews who think we're so safe here in America. Don't worry about it, you know the, the golden land. And I I say, wake up! There is a small but powerful element in, in this country who are neo Nazis. All right. Well, you know the, the, it's going to be interesting because I know that a lot of Jewish students are getting responses from the Ivy Leagues these days, and they're all going to go. Um, because they're not necessarily he heeding the same wake-up call. And uh, you know, everyone has to make, I, I, I would tend to agree that anything, and, and you know, we haven't really seen uh, Rabbi Tversky's response in particular, but I would tend to agree that I don't see any reason why Jews should go to an environment that's not constructive to their uh, living Jewish lives. I'm not really swayed by the argument, oh, that's where we need to be. We should be out in the trenches, and we should be, uh, and we should be in those schools, no matter what. Again, depends on the student. You if know someone... what? A, a lifetime of um, striving towards something. It's hard to like do a, uh, you know, sure. A I get degree, it. Uh, I get it. Uh, that 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 that's why it's gonna. It's really you know the students and the parents have to make decisions. I think that the, the I, I I would say at least from where. From from if we're going in order of whether the sources that we're seeing, that uh, certainly Rabbi Feinstein would say, it's probably not the best thing to strive have a lifetime of striving for this ultimate goal. Uh, and it may have been may have been safer at some point, but uh, 
you know, uh, we, we, maybe this is a this this is a moment of reflection as to you know, w whether it's the the best environment to be in. And again, some people thrive, and you know, as was mentioned, the person Rabbi Tversky himself went to Harvard. So, um, you know, so they, they, there's no, I don't think there's a one size fits all. But I would say, looking at the issue, what we have seen, the university is something. It's complicated, Rabbi Feinstein says, "Ain't no dovar pashut." If it's that complicated, then the current realities that we encounter should be something to to think about a little bit in terms of whether we still aspire to be in the environments that don't like us. Now, look, for Rabbi Feinstein, it's any college setting. I think there's a difference. I think there, uh, if we go back to where we started, the universities that are signing that are signing on to the, the statement of condemning Hamas are, are coming from a, a, a relatively friendly place. If a college, if, if a college or university signs on to that, they're at least starting from a place that, institutionally, they're not concerned. They're they're willing to go on the record for what they say is good and what they say is evil. Maybe the, the, maybe those become the, the, it should, there should be you know certain clarification points. Same thing for Jewish life. There has to be kosher food. There has to be a way to sell to 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 enjoy Shabbos the right way. There has to be davening and learning available, right? Some would say, well, they're not going to go. But I think, look, you know, most of us, if not all of us here, live in communities that uh, have these uh, resources available. We live in these places because they have those communities available. So to go to a place where there's no minion and no classes and no religious life is probably not the best uh, uh, way. So the same thing should be if it's a, if it's a campus that's not willing to uh, distinguish between good and evil. And um, yeah, so it's going to, uh, as Rabbi Feinstein says, Eino Dovar Pashut. Uh, Rabbi Schneerson, the Rebbe, approaches this from a from a from a more of a, a cultural spiritual perspective. Source number seven. This was a letter that he wrote. I must touch upon another and even more delicate matter concerning the teachings of Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch. So as we're going to see in the more open uh, approach to. Uh, or more positive approach to college, at least in, in, in the contemporary era, a lot of the shift came from the German Jewish community, in particular, Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch's Torah in Derech Eretz. The idea that we can combine Torah with uh, secular learning and uh, in engagement in society. So Rabbi Schneerson is writing a concern about those teachers, teachings. There has been a tendency lately to apply this approach in totality here and now in, in here and now in the U.S. and in, in, in America. While it's understandable that the direct descendants of Rabbi Hirsch or those who were brought up in that philosophy should want to disseminate his teachings. While it's understand uh, his teachings, I must say emphatically that to apply this approach to the American scene will not serve the interests of orthodoxy in America. I've written the above only in the hope that you might be able to use your influence with certain circles in Washington Heights that they should again re-examine the whole question and see if the Rabbi Hirsch approach should be applied to the American scene. My decided opinion is, of course, that it should not. And I hope that whatever measure or string you may accomplish through your influence will be all good. So he's writing to a community who are embracing Rabbi Hirsch's views in Washington Heights. Who is he talking about? Very possibly Yeshiva University. Washington Heights, embracing the Hirschian approach. And so it's more, this is not Rabbi, Rabbi Feist says college is not simple. And he also touches upon a specific religious concern that he has. Um, Rabbi uh, Schneerson is more negative on the whole embrace of the secular learning, secular uh, environment, uh, college ethos. As he wrote, as he has mentioned elsewhere, when people said, well, what about you? You went to college. He would say, well, I went. That's why I know that you should, uh, was a common uh, answer that he would give. So Rabbi Schneerson mentions the approach of Rav Hirsch in pushing back against it and seeing it as not necessarily a, an appropriate communal approach for all of orthodoxy. He says, Rabbi Hirsch did it, his descendants did it, his community did it, but it's not a, a, a broad approach. From the opposite direction, you had Rabbi Bernard Revel. You had the establishment of uh, what was then Yeshiva College, it became Yeshiva University, who is, uh, I, I guess the language would be, if we're talking in the Yeshiva language, Pumfakert. It was very opposite of the essence of Rabbi Schneerson's argument, in which he was embracing in uh, writ large the, the Hirschian approach. And he points out that it was in the direction of a whole segment of the Jewish community in general, Rabbi Hirsch was one particular example, that really was 
blazing a trail for what the future in engagement or synergy between Torah and secular society should be. Source number eight, which is a, a, a statement of Rabbi Revel quoted in an article written by Rabbi J.J. Schachter. For the last several generations, West European Orthodox Jewry has considered as its ideal the harmonious combination of modern culture and ways of life with the knowledge of and devotion to the Torah in its entirety and loyalty to its concepts and precepts. The typical champions of this ideal were the German Jews, followers of Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch. To us, the conception of the inevitability of such participation in modern life, thought, and culture is not one of anxiety. Heading in this direction should not be something that worries us. We consider the spirit of progress, of love of and search for knowledge and the advancement of its boundaries, its widest dissemination, not only compatible with, but inherent in the very genius of the genuine Jewish soul. It's very Jewish to go in this direction. Only through a full education in modern thought and culture based upon underlying fundamental knowledge of the teachings and ideals of the Torah can the Jew once more take his proper place in the general path of world progress. Right? This is what Jews need to do to take on a, a, a positive, constructive role in society. Now means engaging with Western thought, Western wisdom, Western knowledge, and, and, and culture. Starts with Torah, and it opens itself up into the rest uh, 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 of uh, all other areas of knowledge uh, of the modern world. This very famously why use slogan, Torah umada, right? Torah and uh, wisdom. Hirsch was Torah im derech eretz. There's a whole parsing of the language. Im umada derech eretz. Anyone who's part of the Yeshiva University community, you have all these arguments coming out of your ears. Uh, was it l'chachil or b'dievet? All these things are discussed. Rabbi, uh, Rabbi uh, Schachter's article is uh, especially unique as he points out a whole bunch of different uh, articles and statements in Hebrew where the words Torah umada were utilized by some of these early adherents, followers, students, and proponents of Yeshiva University. So this is the uh, the, 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 the opposite of Rabbi Schneerson. There's, this is the, Rabbi Schneerson is concerned that it should be looked at very narrowly, this engagement with the Western culture, society, learning, and Rabbi Revel in founding Yeshiva College is this is the next stage of the Jewish evolution to be open towards it. Rabbi Lichtenstein, uh, who we mentioned before, so he talks about it, has a very famous article on consideration of synthesis from a Torah point of view. And uh, let's take a look. It's uh, wordy because everything Rabbi Lichtenstein writes uh, to make a point is often uh, full of words. He was, after all, a PhD in English literature. We cannot combat worldliness until we know what it stands for. We cannot refute the secularists unless we have mastered his arguments. Furthermore, if we wish not merely to react to our environment, but to act upon it, we must be thoroughly familiar with its mores and its values. If B'nai Torah are to exert some positive in religious influence upon modern society, they must clearly maintain some contact with it. To this end, secular study is virtually indispensable. While the importance of general knowledge as a direct auxiliary in the study of Torah is great, is perhaps even more significant than in the third capacity. Secular studies possess immense intrinsic value insofar as they generally help to develop our spiritual personality. Time and again, they intensify our insight into basic problems of moral and religious thought. History and the sciences show us the divine revelation manifests in both human affairs and the cosmic order. The humanities deepen our understanding of man, of his nature, function, and duties. In one area after another, a whole range of general studies sustain religion, supplemented and complemented, in a sense deeper and broader than we have hitherto perceived. The position I've been advancing suggests practical corollary. If secular culture is to be judged from a religious perspective, religious knowledge is an obvious prerequisite to its study. Ideally, the primacy of Torah should therefore also be chronological. Torah first, figuratively and literally, but then expanded to uh, secular knowledge as well. And you know, these two sources, very complementary. Rabbi Revel writing in the beginning of Yeshiva College in 1928, and Rabbi Lichtenstein you know, beginning to promote these ideas half a century later. Uh, and clearly when he became active, you know, in the 60s and 70s as a leader in the Yeshiva University, then religious Zionist community in Israel with the founding of Shiva Haaretzion, it's uh, the, the maturation, the continuity uh, uh, of that approach. So this is, this is the life and death issue of whether to go to a secular college before October 7th. A more conservative, restrictive view a more open, more positive view. So now, what about what's the religious issue after October 7th? So let's go back to Rabbi Tversky. Attending a non-sectarian college does not entail identifying with any ideology. 
It is akin to shopping in a supermarket, which sells kosher and non-kosher items. Patronizing the store does not EO Ipso endorse everything sold. So too, attending a university does not EO Ipso endorse everything taught. There is, however, another consideration. So in general, there's the challenge of assimilation, but just going doesn't mean you're endorsing some of the heretical ideas that are offered there. But what's the other consideration? When a Jew denigrates himself in the public square, he is mechalel es Hashem, profanes the name of God. The Jewish people are Hashem's chosen. He identifies himself with them. Accordingly, when a Jew publicly denigrates himself, as it were, he denigrates Hashem. And for this, Rabbi Torsky relies upon a number of sources with regards to the concept of Chil Hashem, about uh, we're supposed to sanctify God's name and to not desecrate it. And he, he, call, he, he, he bases this upon a Yerushalmi and Tanis, source number 11, which is translated as, I attach my great name to them, which is then expressed by them through their lives. The way a Jew lives has the potential to make a Kiddush Hashem or a Chil Hashem. And so if... Uh, if you are living and putting yourself in an environment that is inherently anti Kiddush Hashem, then you make a Chil Hashem. And so, to some extent, Rabbi Tversky is arguing if you're in a place that has, in a university setting, and they have not, uh, they have not condemned the violence of Hamas, then it's as if they are agreeing with it, and you are putting yourself in that environment as a as a uh, as a consumer in that uh, supermarket of the ideas, and they're doing something which is against uh, Torah values, then you are, in some sense, you are uh, part of the problem because you're living your Jewish life in a place which is antithetical to Jewish values, and therefore you're desecrating God's name. And he gives a specific example from the laws of charity. Um, you know, where Shulchan Aruch writes, an Israelite is forbidden to accept charity from heathens in public. But if he cannot subsist on Jewish charity alone, he's unable to receive it from heathens without public notice. In that case, it is permitted. He says it's a, a why is that, what, what's the problem? So the Shach points out in source number 13, For a Jew to receive non-Jewish, or in particular, it says a heathen, idolatrous charity publicly means that the Jewish community is not able to support one of its own. And to accept that charity publicly is a chil Hashem. Assuming he can subsist on Jewish charity, right? there's that caveat that the Shulchan Aruch mentions. So what Rabbi Tversky is presenting is that a Jew, where and how a Jew lives <clears throat> makes a Kiddush Hashem or a chil Hashem. And a Jew turning or a Jew becoming dependent upon an institutional setting, and that institution is going against morality in Judaism and Israel without condemning the evil of Hamas, and it's as if that person is similar to accepting uh, the Gentile charity publicly, in which case, according to the Shach, it's a Chil Hashem. In, in maybe typical brisker style, or certainly, it is, it, it, this is not a direct argument. It's not that you walk on the Harvard campus as a Chil Hashem. But he's, he is drawing upon sources that are not necessarily completely 100% analogous, but pointing out a, a Jew should not be the recipient of knowledge, wisdom, their degree from a place which is publicly anti-Jewish. And he draws the parallel from the situation of taking charity from the heathen publicly. It's a defamation of character of the Jewish community, in which case it becomes now there are certain caveats. Um, Rabbi, yes, I think it's relevant to remind people that being silent in the face of evil makes you equally cor implicit corrupt. Okay, so that's evil. part of the problem. So, so it's the, therefore those places which have not have have remained silent would be problematic. Correct. So, but but the precedent for Rabbi Tversky is this Hill Hashem aspect as introduced in the Yerushalmi and it's an analogous situation with the accepting the heathen charity publicly which uh, the Shach says is a Chil Hashem and so, so Rabbi Tversky bringing this back to the college campus many colleges have condoned demonstrations justifying even celebrating the Hamas atrocities of October 7th they have either implicitly or explicitly accommodated support for genocide our children's future livelihood or professional opportunities do not in any way depend upon their attending these undergraduate schools. 
Accordingly, for our children to gratuitously apply for the privilege of attending such schools is the height of obsequiousness. It is difficult to imagine a more egregious form of self-denigration. We are effectively proclaiming you can condone, even celebrate the torture, rape, beheading, immolation of our brothers and sisters. Yet we will seek the privilege of attending your school. Such obsequiousness, such self-denigration, and thus applying to and attending these schools is unquestionably a chil Hashem. Politically motivated and backpedaling, cagey clarifications, and hollow expressions of regret are worthless. A change of administration and direction are needed. Barring those changes, it will remain a chil Hashem to attend any of these colleges. So that's the, the way Rabbi Tversky says that the places which have not condemned Hamas behavior would be religiously prohibited from attending because of the ideal Chil Hashem. And uh, the old, he then makes two points. One, providing for one's livelihood, however, is not denigrating. Thus, teaching in these schools is permissible as per the Talmudic distinction above. Additional professional university relation was bilateral. Bilateralism dispels obsequiousness. Such bilateralism, however, does not exist within the student university relationship. Question about teaching there, well, teaching there is a parnasa. It's also a two-way street where the teachers with the professor can make their uh, views known to the uh, employer. Uh, and But be, being a student at a, one of these universities isn't necessary for parnasa purposes, um, livelihood purposes. It would not suffice, but for t- for the, to teach there, uh, that would suffice. So you don't necessarily have to quit your job as a professor in these institutions. The same chil Hashem model doesn't apply. And the propriety of applying to a graduate school under the aegis of these universities is more nuanced. Dispensation of pursuing one's livelihood may be relevant. The graduate degree may actually be more towards uh, ensuring the person have the right training for their uh, livelihood. If there's no comparable program in terms of training or professional advancement on the university, it would be permissible to apply. In addition, some instances, graduate schools have fortune identity uniquely their own. Independent of the parent school. In such instances, arguably, the position of the university administration does not reflect upon the school. This angle requires quite careful consideration, further thought. The, the law school, the med school, may be different than the uh, the, the environment of the undergraduate uh, campus. So that is um, how, uh, Rabbi, where, how Rabbi Tversky concludes. After October 7th, he introduces the idea of being a Chil Hashem to be a student on a campus in which the administration has not condemned Hamas and in, in, in implicitly uh, allows such uh, terrible celebrations of their uh, this, uh, of their horrific behavior and sees this obsequiousness as akin to uh, Chil Hashem and how he approached it, in addition to whatever the complications are in general of going to university. And we saw some of the uh, approaches of the more conservative and more open uh, with regards to university. Again, you know, which specific schools he doesn't discuss. I think you know some of us are making uh, connections based on what we see in the news. Uh, but uh, you know we have to dig a little bit further and uh, ask uh, Rabbi Tversky himself for more clarifications. But it was, I think, a a, a unique uh, approach to take this in the Kiddush and Chil Hashem direction in order to provide a certain religious, even a halachic framework uh, to these uh, to, to to this question of the the college campus. Uh, for Jewish students today. Uh, hopefully more and more school schools will sign on and, and uh, remove themselves from the questionable category. doesn't change the danger on campus. Remember, he's not talking about students who protest. He's talking about the setting itself and the university leadership and the tone that they set. Uh, and, uh, but hopefully we will uh, see uh, uh, Jewish students making uh, being in the best environments to grow uh, and to thrive. I think, you know, as Rabbi Feinstein said several times in his response, you know, Pashut, it's not simple, it is complicated, and uh, we'll see which direction uh, this year, this, this year's uh, high school seniors, where they go. There was talk about there being fewer applications to Harvard, as an example. We'll see where uh, our students end up, and please God, hopefully they will make the right decisions. Rabbi? Um, 